Ever have a print fail so fast you didn't have time to emotionally bond with it? One minute the first layer looks like the chef's kiss, the next minute it's filled with spaghetti regret and the whisper of, why do you hate me? Today, we're fixing that. <laughs> Welcome to Make or Build It. Today, we're fixing those problems you can't ignore. If you're struggling with adhesion on your Bamboo Labs A1, A1 Mini, especially if you're using the Texture PEI plate, but also a cold plate, a cool plate, you just have glue confusion or your print jumps off the plate despite you, this is the video for you. Now, bed adhesion isn't magic. It's a balance between temperature, surface type, cleanliness, and how much plastic hates to shrink when it's cool. And if any one of those is off, even slightly, your print may escape your bed like it heard the word commitment. Let's start with the play type that causes the most confusion, whether it's your Bamboo Labs A1, and I just used that example because I had a lot of questions on it, or any other printer, a textured PEI plate. These plates are incredible, but they're also responsible for a lot of my printer is broken comments online. Here's why, the PEI plate doesn't rely on glue or coatings, it relies on a mechanical grip, which is what the texture is. Molten plastic flows into the microscopic texture, cools and locks in place like a thousand little anchors. That means texture equals grip, smooth equals less grip, because there are smooth PEI plates as well as smooth cold plates. But dirty texture equals no grip at all. So why do PEI plates fail? The texture surface lies to you visually. It helps hide bad first layers. Common mistakes when printing on a PEI plate are the first layer could be too high, the PLA or PETG or whatever you're printing in could be printing too cool, the bed could be dirty with oil from your fingertips as we all touch the plates when we're pulling them off our printers. And probably one of the worst things you do is adding glue just in case. Your print may look fine for the first few seconds, but over sudden you'll see a corner lift up and pretty much in most cases it's over. Sometimes your printer can get past it, but in most cases it will end that print because it's just not gonna adhere to your plate. So PLA and PETG stick really well to PEI plates if it's hot enough or close to hot enough. A good starting point with a PEI plate is a bed temperature of 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. Also make sure your first layer speed is slow. If your print pops off your PEI plate mid print, it's usually one of only a few things. Not enough heat, not enough squish, or a dirty plate. Now, other things can cause your print to be knocked off, such as like nozzle knock, but in most cases, using a PEI plate, it is going to be one of those reasons why your print doesn't uh, adhere to your plate. So we mentioned glue before. Adding glue to your PEI plate actually makes it worse. And this is a big one. Glue actually fills the texture, which actually makes it hard for your print to actually stick to the PI plate and do its job with a mechanical connection. Glue does not equal adhesion. Glue equals a smooth plate, and a smooth plate equals no mechanical lock. If your print stuck worse after you added glue, you didn't do anything wrong, you just learned PI physics. So cleaning your PI plate is absolutely mandatory. You don't need to clean it after every print, but if you are touching the main part of the build plate where you print and not handling it by the little tabs on the end, you will need to clean it more often. So here's the correct method for cleaning a PI plate. You want some warm water, some Dawn dish soap, a soft sponge, make sure you rinse it thoroughly, and let it air dry. Usually for PEI plates, soap is your salvation. So let's talk about cold and cool plates. While they perform much better than a PEI plate, while cold and cool plates could also fail, but just at a different temperature, um, there are reasons why these also fail. But in my opinion, I always have much more success with my cold and cool plates honestly than I do with my uh, regular PEI plates, which is why I use them on almost all my printers. These plates rely more on surface chemistry than they do on texture themselves. For instance, this one's pretty smooth. I also do have uh, textured 
cooling cold plates from BQ Panda that I think work great. But because they rely on surface chemistry, cleanliness actually matters even more with smoother cold and cool plates or even smooth PI plates. So how do cool and cold plates differ? Cold plates rely on no temperature on the bed, while cool plates rely on slightly warm uh, bed temperatures. Now, cold and cool plates only fail for two reasons. One, basically a dirty surface, you know, oil from your fingers, or you have the wrong bed temperature. That's pretty much the only reason one of these will fail. And if your print really won't stick to a cold or a cool print, it's rarely the case that the bed temperature is wrong. It is almost the fact that the surface of your build plate is dirty from your fingers. And yes, I will wash all of these with Dawn dish soap at the end of this video. So I know you're probably gonna yell at me for touching them right now in the comments, but that is okay. I'm showing you how this works. I do want to go back to talking about glue for a second because there is a lot of confusion around glue and using them on your plates. Glue is not always for adhesion. Glue is sometimes to help with the release of your actual print from your plate. Glue actually helps with the release of your prints when you're printing in things like PETG, TPU, or you have a really large um, print on your bed. Now, flexi plates have sort of change that and because we do use them as flexi plates we're always touching the surface of our plates that's why a lot of times when a print fails it is more near the corners of the plate than it is in the center because most of us aren't sticking our hands in the center of our plate they're usually on the edges so that's why we see a lot of failure around the corners when we're uh, printing on a PEI or a cold or cool plate. So if your PLA is not sticking to your plate and your instinct is to add more glue, stop. Just clean your plate with some soap and water. If your print worked last week and all of a sudden it's not adhering, you touched your build plate. And trust me, your build plate knows. Now, one of the other things you could help to have your print adhere to your plate is to use a brim or a raft. I know a lot of people are like, I don't need a brim or a raft, but brim or rafts sometimes help, especially if you have tall, narrow parts. Brims aren't cheating, they're just admitting physics exist. Use brims for tall, skinny parts, prints that have sharp corners, or prints that are near the edge of your build plate. A simple three to five millimeter brim can actually help save your print. And if you don't have a printer that watches your first layer, watching your first layer is really important. Most times it will tell you everything you need to know about how that print is going to go. Always go with washing your plate before you start panic tuning your printer. I always get the question, which build plate do I recommend? And I actually recommend the BQ Frostbite. I think this is one of the best build plates. The one that I pretty much always have success with. And they just came out with this really cool new matte orange color. Now this one's compatible with the Bamboo Labs A1, P1S, P2S and X1C. Now they do make it for other bamboo layer printers as well as other manufacturers. And it's designed for low temperature, no glue printing. For PLA, you're printing between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius. And PETG, you're printing between 50 and 70 degrees Celsius, which means faster heat up, less power use, and less thermal stress. It uses a matte coating, which cleans up really easy. And the X1C will automatically recognize it due to the codes down at the bottom of the plate. Now, here's a quick tip. If your prints won't come off by flexing it, you can actually throw this in the freezer for about 10 minutes and your prints will slip right off. Plus, the new matte orange color looks super awesome. And don't worry, I'll throw a link to this and the other build plates in the description below. Bed adhesion problems aren't personal, it's just physics reminding us of who's in charge. For more on 3D printing, DIY, and maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It. And remember, keep on making. Remember, master the first layer and everything above it gets easier.